Hello, third graders. We're on chapter seven today. We're going to about, learn about love and law. So, chapter seven, God's laws of love. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. Romans chapter two, verse 13. So the letter to the Romans, St. Paul's letter. For us of it's not just merely just hearing, knowing, knowing well, how to live one's life, but then actually doing it, living it, All right? And the Lord gives us grace, the, the little helps we need uh, to, to do that, you know, spiritual helps. Uh, after the children of God had safely escaped Egypt, they still had challenges to face. They had a long way to go before they reached the promised land. God had protected them on their way. He gave them quail meat, a, a bread-like food called manna, and fresh water from a rock. He gave them enough each day to satisfy their hunger and thirst. It's important that God provided them each day. They have to trust that he was going to provide the next day, and he did. He said he was going to provide for them, and he did. So they have to trust. And some people, uh, on because on the uh, um, God told them to take twice as much on Friday, the day before Saturday, the, their Sabbath, the day of rest for them, uh, and some of them, uh, they were told to take more then. But others, during other days, they tried to take more and try to keep store it, and it went bad. All right? So they were only allowed to take more for the next day on Friday because on Saturday there would be they were supposed to rest and not have to go out and gather uh, the manna. Um, but if they kept more over on other days, it went bad. Worms and stuff got in it. All right. God also wanted to nourish the souls of his children. He wanted to teach them how to live how to love him, and to be good to each other. One day God called Moses, his prophet, to the top of Mount Sinai and gave him the rules of his kingdom. We call these rules the Ten Commandments. God gave them to Moses written on stone tablets, but he wanted them to be written on our hearts. All right, so God gives the mo at Mount Sinai. God gives him the, uh, Moses the commandments. So here's a, an artistic picture of that, of kind of Moses going up Mount Sinai. God kind of, you can see, representing God here, kind of giving him the tablets, all right? So giving him, now we don't know if that's, you know, exactly how that all went. I know the, uh, uh, some movies, depictions of it have, there's the stone tablets and like lightning come, God strikes him down, writes it on it there on the tablets, says it and writes it on. Uh, we don't know exactly how it is, but... You can see there's the angels there who are adoring the Lord and the importance of the cloud also uh, that was over Mount Sinai because uh, uh, kind of the cloud uh, in many places in the Bible, uh, kind of a manifestation of cloud kind of uh, is, represents God's presence. God's um, kind of hidden in the cloud. So there's Moses receiving the Ten Commandments from the Lord. The first three commandments told the people how to worship and respect God. The last seven told them how to be kind and fair to each other. The commandments asked them to do some things and avoid others. God meant all ten commandment, meant all ten of these to work together in our daily life. So it's not just a picking and choosing. I like this one. I don't like that one. Uh, I won't kill my neighbor, but I'll tell you, no, no, you don't kill, you don't steal, you know. Uh, so God also meant to bring also meant them to bring happiness and joy to God's children, God, his, his children's lives. He wanted to protect them from the sadness of sin. All right, and so this importance of rules are, are good. They're a fence. They help protect us. If you ever go down uh, along Highway 8 on the river coming down to Taylor's Falls or even uh, over across the bridge, like there's guardrails, those help protect you. If there were no guardrails on bridges and stuff or over cliffs, uh, near cliffs and stuff, it would be a little on driving. You'd be like, I, uh, hopefully I don't. But it's, it's a protective measure. Because if I hit, it, it's helped to keep me on the road. Same with the Ten Commandments. They're helped to keep us on, on the road. Uh, as well as so that we harm others and we don't harm ourselves. Because sin, for the first thing sin harms is ourself. Uh, it, it kind of closes us off from God and our capacity to love it decreases it. Uh, even though God gave the Ten Commandments to his people during the time of the Old Testament, they are meant for all God's people until the end of time. 
All right, so it's not just well when Jesus comes, he gets rid of them. No, no, no. These are the these are the guardrails, or these are the fence around meant to be the garden of our soul. Uh, now Jesus comes because he wants to help put super miracle grow in the garden of our souls to really boom. Uh, but this importance of the commandments are are always there. Uh, they'll always be all right uh, because we're human, and these are how we live in uh, in, in harmony. Uh, at least many of them are negative precepts. Do not do this. Do not do that. Because uh, it's a lot easier to obey a negative precept. Uh, do not beat up your brother versus love your brother. All right. It's a lot easier. Loving your brother determines the situation much more. Whereas I'm not going to beat him up or, or harm him, kill him. Uh, that's that's a little clear. All right. Um, so there's there's a reason why God gives us the Ten Commandments and why they're, they are the way they are. Uh, but they're really for the relationship. They help protect relationships so that love can grow. Uh, when some people asked Jesus which of the commandments was the greatest, he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with your mind, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 37 to 39. So God, they ask these questions, they're kind of testing Jesus, and Jesus, he doesn't just give them one. He says the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your mind, uh, your heart, your soul, your mind. Um, and then he gives, I'll give you a second one too, but it's, but it's connected, loving your neighbor uh, as yourself. Keeping God's commandments is not always easy, but they are for our good. They help us to love God and our neighbor. Someday we will see God, we hope to see God face to face. Uh, if we have followed his commandments on earth, he promises to share with us the joys of heaven and last and last for that last forever. So the commandments they help keep us on the way directed and there's the first loving the Lord your God with all your heart and then loving our neighbor. Uh, when we love God with all our heart, it all gives us the capacity then to love our neighbor properly. And when we're loving our neighbor, uh, it's one way we can directly show love to the Lord, to God. Just as when you're you're kind to your brothers and sisters, uh, you're showing your your parents they love that. All right, it's 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 one way you show love toward them. When you're fighting uh, or in arguing, uh, it's kind of your it also kind of shows kind of disrespect toward your parents indirectly, of kind of creating chaos in their home, which is your home also. But remember, they're they're your parents, so. <laughs> Uh, so one way we love our parents is also by loving our, our brothers and sisters. One way we love God is by loving others. Uh, all right, the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. God is one. Uh, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. So we don't use God's name, Jesus' name, Christ, or the Mary or the saint's name in a, a, a bad way. We'll go through these more in depth in later chapters, kind of... Uh, Remember to keep holy the Lord's Day. So the Lord's Day Sunday, keeping it holy through worship and rest. Uh, honor your father and your mother. So parents, all right, so that's important. God gives us our parents. And so honor our parents. Uh, you shall not kill. So not harming others. Uh, you shall not commit adultery. So for you will learn more about that, what that means for you uh, as third graders. Uh, you can begin living, kind of living in harmony with that commandment. You shall not steal. Don't take from other things. Don't lie. You shall not lie. Always tell the truth. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, and you shall not covet your neighbor's goods. All right. And so in coming chapters, we'll go be going through uh, these more in, a little more in depth. All right. So words to know, Mount Sinai. That's where Moses went up, and God gave Moses and Israel the Ten Commandments that uh, are for you and me. And the commandments are, or well, there's 10 of them, the 10 commandments that God gave us. They're really those guardrails to keep us, uh, they're, they're rules so we can grow in love. All right, so they help to, to bring us happiness ultimately. They help us, the guardrails or they're the fence, all right, protect us and others. Uh, what are the commandments of God? The commandments of God are the moral laws that God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai for all his people. So it says moral laws, that's our behavior. There are laws for our behavior. So it's like moral law, oh, that's all negative. No, actually, it's how to direct our behavior, how to guide our behavior. That's what that means. Uh, must we follow the commandments of God? 
Yes, we must follow the commandments of God. All right, the importance of if we want to grow closer to God, we want to we want to get to heaven. We need to follow them, as Saint Paul says. Uh, it's not just hearing the law, but doers of the law that, uh, will be justified. Will be in right relationship with God. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Those are Jesus's words from the Gospel of John, chapter fourteen, verse fifteen. Very important. That Jesus even if you love me. You will keep my commandments. Well, what are the commandments? Jesus, these are God. Jesus, these God is Jesus is God, and they're God. They're they're Jesus's commandments, just as much as they're the, God the Father's commandments, God the Holy Spirit's commandments. All right. So, if you love our love of Jesus, our love of our Lord, one way we show that is by keeping His commandments. All right. Where did my saint book go? Who do we got today? The nearly last time. All right. All right, St. Calamus, uh, let's get him out here. We are St. Calamus de Lelis, uh, city in, that's a city in Italy. I don't, um, uh, Calamus was born in Italy in 1550. As a young man, he became a soldier and led a wayward life. He, laid a, he wasn't really following God or God's rules. Uh, he lost so much in gambling that he was forced to work on a building which belonged to the Capuchins. Uh, so the Capuchins are, are a particular group of the Franciscans, uh, so founded by St. Francis uh, of Assisi. Uh, he was converted and tried three times to enter the Capuchin order, but each time a wound in his leg forced him to leave. He went to Rome for medical treatment and there took St. Philip Neri as his confessor. Hey, we just learned about him last, I think last chapter. Yeah, last chapter, St. Philip Neri. So he wasn't able to, the Capuchins, every time you got, you got this, in, and they have certain penance, you know, kind of their life is very rigorous. And so he wasn't able to live it. So it was one way God was directing him. Okay, that's not going to be your, your vocation with the Capuchins. Uh, let's go. Calamus entered the hospital for incurables. Later he had charge of it. At the age of 32, he began to study grammar with children. Wow, that's very humbling, all right? It's like going back to first grade, all right? Uh, of the noble family of Lelis Calamus, when still a young priest, consecrated his life to the service of the sick. He founded the Order of Hospitalers, Hospitalers, or the Congregation of the Servants of the Sick. The brothers served the sick, not only in hospitals, but also in their homes. Calamus died a victim of his charity in 1614. Probably contracted a disease from someone else, the people that he was serving, perhaps during a, a serious plague or something, but how much he loved them and uh, how much he embraced our Lord uh, by loving by loving the, those that were sick, tending to them. All right, so St. Calamus Pray for us. Help us grow in charity. Now we're going to pray the act of love today. And we'll be praying the, the act of faith one week, the act of, so we have an act of love. All right, back on page 158, back of your books here. So it's an act of love. And just as the act of hope and faith, there aren't, there's a, like a strict one. This is kind of, uh, has the essential elements of an act of love, but it points to our kind of, really asking God to help us grow in love of him and of our neighbor. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh my God, I love you above all things with my whole heart and soul, because you are all good and worthy of all my love. I love my neighbor as myself for, I lo for love of you. I forgive all who have injured me, and I ask pardon of all whom I have injured. Amen. Father, and Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. An act of love, love of God, love of neighbor, and, and even in that, this, this act of love here, it has kind of this asking, Lord, help me, help me to forgive others who harm me. Uh, and Lord, I ask for your, uh, I ask for pardon, mercy from you. So God's love uh, and mercy. So there we are.